Hi, I'm Tyler Fultz. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of commercial nuclear power experience from engineering to operations to emergency response to capital projects. I don't claim to know everything there is to know nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. If you like this video, please leave me a like down below and go ahead and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. If you didn't like this video, please let me know down in the comments. I'm always looking to improve. Today we're going to be looking at a uh, video from What If called uh, What If You Fell Into a Spent Nuclear Fuel Pool. You'll see I have right here a picture of a uh, spent nuclear fuel pool right there. Let's take a look. This is a spent nuclear fuel pool. No. No, it's not. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> Uh, that, um, no, that, to me, that, that is, I don't even, this looks more like Bowser's, um, jacuzzi from Super Mario Sunshine than a spent fuel pool. <laughs> a nuclear reactor, these fuel rods become very, very hot. And that's not a nuclear fuel rod. To me, that's a uh, that's a bug zapper that is turning orange. <laughs> oh lord! And deflecting the radiation bouncing against it. This makes it completely safe for you to stand near the pool with no ill effects. But what happens if you fall in the water? So they're right about no ill effects of the radiation, but they're showing a green thing and they're showing an astronaut, not even a scuba diver, <laughs> falling into a pool. This, I don't know what they're getting at here. That's, that just looks silly. All right, so fundamentals. Let's see if we can fix them out. This is what fuel pellets look like. Um, they're safe to be handled. They are tiny uranium oxide pellets and they're they're very light but each one contains an enormous an enormous amount of energy then they are arranged into a fuel assembly you'll see there are many many of those rods uh, dozens of it, of them in there loaded with fuel per assembly each rod weighs about a ton and uh, these rods are then arranged in the core of uh, the reactor vessel um, and that's just how the fuel is is laid out to uh, ultimately heat the water make the steam turn the turbine and make electricity but i don't it looks nothing like the little <laughs> bug zapper thing they were going with <laughs> Here is a fuel assembly being lowered into a spent fuel pool. Note that there is um, lighting and a soft um, blue tint to it, not green. The, it's that same green mythos is permeating its way. <laughs> and you'll see it is very, very safe to handle. Um, those are, there are fuel movers right there. Um, you don't want it to get it outside of the water. As they said, they were right when they said that water acts as a shield and a heat absorber from these fuel assemblies, but their visuals were all off. But this is a very controlled um, evolution and very controlled act of these guys moving fuel assemblies. They need a, uh, a crane operator, his peer checker, and a supervisor for when these individuals move. You gotta, in, because you gotta be sure it's a safe um, critical lift. Um, you're loading the fuel in the right spot. And um, the person, they need to be supervised by a senior reactor operator, someone licensed by the federal government to mu move um, spent nuclear fuel during a uh, refueling outage. And what's not shown here is there is also, you're also very deliberate about what sort of materials are allowed above the uh, spent fuel pool. Um, there are, 
everything that goes above it is logged because you just don't want don't want anything to fall in you just want to want to take care of of the fuel here's a picture of the spent fuel pool again all those little um that little grid down in there that's where all the uh, fuel assemblies are housed when you're not actively mo moving fuel over at least 23 feet of water um, and that water acts as both a shield from radiation and from the heat so if you fall into the pool there is no greater risk than falling into any other similar sized body of water the uh the worst thing that can happen to you realistically is drowning now you you don't you would have to swim underwater back when one of these is pulled out and then bear hug one of these assemblies <laughs> in order to get a significant amount of dose from them that it would adversely affect your health but there's enough water above the fuel assemblies to keep obviously the crane operators safe and anyone that would that that would fall in it'll also protect you if you happen to fall inside one as long as you don't swim several meters underwater to touch the fuel rods you'd be completely fine <laughs> yeah in theory you could swim in this pool until you looked like a raisin without feel so they have the right audio here but they don't have consistently the right video they've showed pictures of spent fuel pool of a real spent fuel pool along with this silly illustration <laughs> so yes you would be safe if you fell into a spent fuel pool um provided you knew how to swim and you probably don't want to be wearing a spacesuit. it's kind of hard to swim in those <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was a that was a weird one where there's just a dissonance between the audio and the video. Um, let me know what you thought about that below. <laughs> Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.